Okay, so at long last, I've managed to pin down crooked dice for more than a please send me more shiny things. And we're joined here with Carl, Peter, and Natalie. There we go. Um, so, Carl, how has it gone so far for you at the Expo? It's busier than I've ever seen. Yesterday was twice as busy as the Saturday was last year, and today it's just been absolutely mobbed for the entire thing. It's been fantastic. So, are you finally going to be able to buy the crooked dice yacht? Yeah, well, well I really, do only need a dinghy to get to the yacht now, so we'll, we'll just be doing that, yeah. It'll be an island, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Pelp, of course, is the latest, biggest thing from Crooked Dice. Yep. But it wasn't just your own machinations that brought this into being, was it? Oh, I've done very little apart from getting the way. This has been all the hard work of Edge Hill University, who we've partnered with for the last two years, yep. uh, with six, 14, 16 students? 16 students. Under the direction of, of Peter uh, here. Um, to take some TV and adapt it for the cliffhanger serials of the 30s and 40s, so your classic King of the Rocking Man, Flash Gordon, Dick Tracy, and more, Hulu, Lovecraft, all, all of those kind of genres mixed in for a brand new box set. So is this a very different kind of project for you to undertake? It's the first time we've ever done anything like this. It was part of Edge Hill University Press, and every year Edge Hill University Press work with an outside publisher usually to produce a book. So we produce books of poetry, books of fiction, books of, about screenwriting and script writing. And when it was my turn to kind of work on a project, I wanted to do a project that involved the students in actually creating something. And because most of the students were my narrative game students from my first year, second year, and third year, we decided to try and work with a games company uh, to produce the game. And I met Carl two years ago. Asked me if I knew anybody, and I didn't. Oh, um, we for a professional company, but we found Carl. So you know, uh, it's something better than nothing. Yeah, yeah I, I would dispute that, but yeah. <laughs> and we just we just started talking about Edgar Rice Burroughs. Yeah. And I was originally going to pitch um, a, a, a program guide for an Edgar Rice Burroughs series. Uh, type series um, and then we started thinking well actually the pulp project is bigger than that yeah. and that coincided with my turn with Edgehill University Press and I thought well maybe we can do a pulp game with Carl and Carl went yeah that's fine okay we'll do that so we put up an internal advert at the university had applications ran an interview process that Carl came up and sat in on uh, we appointed our interns for a year and then the following year, uh, we appointed a new set of interns, set. with the exception of a couple of students that carried on and worked on the project for two years. So it was very much students and staff generated content yeah. that we then passed over to you. And then we had the whole editorial back and that. forth uh, for about, four, about three or four months. Yeah. Um, and, and it's out. We launched it yesterday and it's been really popular. Which is yeah, nice. yeah. So you were one of the unfortunates that, that made the mistake of signing up for this. Running too slow, I believe. Yes. Yeah. So um, I'm just about to finish my MA in creative writing. Um, obviously, when people think of creative writing, usually they think novel. So it's been really nice to have an opportunity to find you know, how, you know the wider applications to the subject I'm, I'm doing. We've got commercial experience now, which is going to be really great when I try and find a job. You know, it's just been an opportunity that, you know, I wouldn't have been able to find anywhere else. I'm just so grateful to have been involved in it. Being involved in this, was this, was gaming a, a new thing for you? Or have you been doing tabletop gaming, board gaming beforehand? Yeah. So I was very much um, a board gamer, but not so much anything with a tape measure. Um, so when it came in, I wasn't sure about it, but I've been playtesting this for six months now and I just can't get enough. I just, it's converted me completely. Happy days. <laughs> Very good. Well, it looks fantastic. I was one of the backers. We gamers always like to, to keep their eye on crooked dice because uh, we, you know, there's just no better and better money on. Um, but knowing you, what's next on the horizon? Now that the the glory has shone on pulp already, you know that was yesterday. What about tomorrow? I'm gonna I'm gonna have a bit of a sit down. We're gonna have had three kickstarters in about eighteen months. Uh, we've got apocalypse. That's all right. Year. So we so need that as well. Uh, but yeah. Be, I'm going to go back to you know regular releases so we've got loads of stuff coming out there there's some previews in the cabinet if you want to look at those um, later so we'll be supporting it with more miniatures for Pulp and I've got some stuff left over from Apocalypse and also still servicing 7TV so we've got all of that also got a big roster of kind of program guides that I've got to get back to <laughs> so there's some of those there may be some potential for other kind of projects to 
like uh, down the line. Also recently bought the uh, Colony 87, which is a beautiful line of sci-fi civilians um, and looking to maybe develop so maybe something a little bit different uh, for that, for, for gaming opportunities. So loads. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, it's nice to have finally call you. Uh, well done, and Paul. It looks fantastic. Can't wait to get playing it as well. Lovely to finally get talking to you. Yes. And uh, we've taken up a few of your time. We will disappear off into the, the crowds once again and leave you to it. Thanks for chatting, folks. Good luck. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You. Thank, Thank you. you.